Hey guys, my name's Doug, and it's great to have you here with us on this journey. Uh, this is Emerald Hill Skies, and darkness is falling here. Uh, when I arrived, it was just turning dusk, and I captured one last image of all the deer uh, grazing on uh, two sides of us here in this kind of open field. Uh, laying on this tarp and blanket behind me are the elements to uh, kind of a brand new imaging, a new astro imaging setup that I'm looking forward to trying out tonight. And thankfully, because you guys are with me, we can try it out together. This will be, uh, as they say, first light for uh, the telescope, which is uh, a RASA 11 with a new Octopi Astro uh, camera interface on the front of it. Um, there is a new uh, Ioptron uh, pier that uh, sets up like a tripod. And uh, there's also a new Ioptron CEM70G mount that we can try out. Now, I've got to be honest with you, I have no idea how this is going to work tonight. This uh, camera device is brand new from the folks at Opt Opt uh, Octopi Astro, and they've asked us to try it out, so we're looking forward to doing that. It has the, all the filtering uh, uh, equipment to be able to swap filters in and out for you guys who do uh, uh, mono capturing, uh, narrow band. Uh, we'll, we'll hook it all up. We've got the dew shield now in. We've wired up the uh, scope, so all of the wiring is there on the scope, uh, so it uh, fastens to the top of the saddle and just plugs in. And with the Ioptron mounts, as you guys know, there are plenty of uh, cable management inside the mount, so we don't have to have that uh, overflowing strand of uh, cables that, that is kind of famous in uh, astrophotography. And, uh, so we're looking forward to trying this out. I'm going to shut the camera off and set all the stuff up and hook everything together and see if we can spot anything in the sky at all. So thanks for being with me on this journey. Okay, it's about 2 a.m. and uh, we've got everything hooked up. We had just a little hitch in understanding how to arrange the wiring, but we finally got that solved. And now we're ready to go to the sky. So you can see, uh, here's the scope aimed up at the North Star. You can see we've been fighting clouds all night. You can see some of those cloud banks up in the sky. But um, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead over to um, Sky Safari and let's just go to something grand for first light. Let's go to um, M42, the Great Nebula in Orion. And uh, let's hope the clouds, this is a winter constellation, but let's hope that this is a part of the sky where the clouds have cleared or are clearing from. And um, you can see the scope making its way over to that part of the sky. You can see um, the way the scope travels now, all the wiring is on the scope and then it plugs into connections that are right there on the saddle of the mount. So that does away with most of that large, uh, you know, wad of wiring that we used to have. See the black uh, dew shield on the end of the scope. Let's go over to sharp cap now and uh, watch that come in. These will be, this is it. This is the first light images in the new scope. And you can see there's still some wispy clouds in the way. But what this is is a three second exposure at 400 gains. You can see the trapezium there in the center of this great nebula in Orion. It is kind of blowing out the nebula. Uh, in between uh, exposures, you can see some of the wisp of the clouds moving in and out. But still, I think it's pretty uh, interesting that this 11-inch Rasa can pull all that all that wispy detail in almost real time. Uh, so let's just go ahead and, and prepare here for um, uh, some stacking just to see what we can pull out among the clouds. Let's go at 20 seconds at 100 
gain. And that looks like a pretty good framing. Um, let's start live stacking and see what we can come away with there. Once again, back um, at the scope, I'll just mention, again, this is a an 11 inch process, so it has about twice as much light gathering capacity as the eight inch that we were using. And you see that's uh, just a kind of a temporary tripod with a pier built together with the tripod since it's a heavier setup. Uh, of course, long term, this will be a permanent mounted pier inside the observatory. And this entire scope will be inside the observatory long term. Uh, the mount, which is on top of that column, on top of the tripod, the gizmo that points it in the right place is an Ioptron CCEM70G. And it's kind of unique because it has a guiding system built in. It does have a polar alignment system built in, which I can't imagine we would use since the telescope works so well to line with sharp cap. Um, the weights you can see on the, the counterweight bar there, uh, those are two 20 uh, pound weights and a 10 pound weight uh, to, to balance the, the heavier 11 inch scope that you see there. Okay, let's go back to sharp cap. And now let's do, um, see we've got four frames, about 80 seconds. <clears throat> let's do a color match. <clears throat> and then let's pull our black level down to there. Let's bring our mids in. Wow, this this telescope has so much light gathering power. This is a whole different realm. Look at the way it has already, in just 100 seconds, look at the way it's bringing in all those hydrogen gas clouds. I'm gonna do a color balance again, just to try to balance out some of those. Look at the beauty of all those reds and those greens, some of that is just due to the wispy nature of the cloud still. And look at the way that the um, stars kind of blow out the middle of that. They call the trapezium, kind of blow out the middle. Let's drop this down to 10 seconds for, yeah, 10 seconds for a while. And look at the beautiful reds, the hydrogen alpha reds there. Look at where we have our mids. This is a whole different telescope to get used to because of how much light it's pulling in, even on a super cloudy night. Some of that a uh, halo you see is uh, wispy clouds, but a lot of it also is just the dust of this uh, particular nebula. This is two minutes and 50 seconds now. Wow, look at those reds, gang. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit to pick up some of those, to zoom in on some of those reds. Look at that going to have some tuning of our scope here to get rid of uh, some sensor tilt, but already you can see what this scope is going to be able to do as time goes on. When we get that tuned up. I decided tonight just to go ahead and start observing. I got it. I got it closer within reach, but I decided before clouds totally blocked us out. I would at least uh, get, you know, first light object going. This gives me a lot of hope. So what I'll do now next is I'll um, start tuning in these 
stars so we have a lot better um, alignment both in the sensor and also as far as field curvature goes with our back focus. I'll be working on that. This is uh, 3 minutes and 30 seconds and uh, I think that's a decent image on a cloudy night for us to be able to save as a first light image in the middle of all these clouds. So once again we're uh, using a Rasa 11, Celestron Rasa 11 and I uh, just want to thank you for being a part of this with us. Um, we'll be tuning this in the observation nights that come in the future and we'll have other videos. I hope you'll subscribe and kind of follow us as we pull this sensor uh, so it's directly back into alignment correctly and we get the back focus adjusted correctly. I hope you'll subscribe and also hit like, a thumbs up if you don't mind. Uh, maybe even share this video with others. Uh, it's going to be great doing this journey with you. Thanks for uh, taking us up to 300 subscribers. Whoever imagined there would be 300 people. Thank you for being a part of this adventure. And we look forward to traveling this journey through space and time uh, with you. And we thank God for making all these beautiful objects so we can see. So thanks again for tuning in.